Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. The live streams that this video covers mainly involve capturing around Mercury, which we are finally able to do after quite a lot of maneuvers with these missions. So first of all, this is the mission that I ended with in the previous video, which is the one that's supposed to bring Arthur E. King, our Kerbal tourist, back home after his visit to Mercury. And so this is capturing. It always had the most Delta V to work with. The question is whether it's arriving at Mercury with enough Delta V to actually bring Arthur back. And that uh, that's a tough call. You can see it's got a prodigious amount of Delta V because, of course, it's an ion engine ship. And it's basically a huge tank of xenon gas. So it had that going for it. But once it connects up with Arthur's ship, with its food, water, and oxygen, we have to wonder whether it have enough Delta V at that point. And I don't think so. Anyway, but we'll get to that later on. In addition to that, this is a supply mission, uh, sort of an emergency backup supply mission. We've got a few of those on the way. And this is actually a Saturn supply mission because we've sent uh, two Kerbals, that Lord Root and Mr. Doobie, off to Saturn uh, to go to Titan, basically. And they have enough food, water, and oxygen to get there, but not enough to stay there for very long or get back. So. I needed to send some extra, and that's what this is doing. You can tell it's for the outer planets because it only has one of the ion engine sets because we have a lot of time to do the burns. Here I'm dissecting the Looney Lynx, which was a Lynx that was meant to go to the moon on top of a Cassade rocket, and trying to rework it a bit because that method didn't quite work out very well. Uh, first I thought about using an Orion uh, service module, but then I decided to do something a little bit different. I thought about using these candle engines, which are basically fueled pass through an RTG, but this shied away from that. Those come with KSB Interstellar. They're very high efficiency, but they're not very high thrust, so it would take a long time to do those burns. Instead, on this top payload energy rocket with an upper stage, or you could call it a four booster Vulcan, I've got a version of the Lynx with a service module that has BE7 engines. So, two BE7 engines on the service module. Hydrogen and oxygen, not as much efficiency as those candle engines, but lots more thrust. So, we are going with that, and there go the boosters. We've seen this rocket a few times launching out of Baikonur. Then of course the core finishes up, basically getting us to orbit there. I meant to keep it suborbital, I think. And here we've got the upper stage, the Vesuvius stage with uh, RD-57 transferring us over to the moon. And I separate the panels individually because I think I was nervous about something for some reason. Or maybe I was just trying to separate the panels that were above the solar panels. I'm not sure. I think I was wondering whether I had set the decouple when releasing the soul panel setting or something, maybe. Anyway, so those are off and we are deploying the Salyut soul panels on the service module here. Sort of a cobble together thing, we got B7 engines, HTV, um, solar panel and I, I was using that to carry food, water and oxygen for Mir. We are basically bringing some supplies over to Mir as well. So that's what the HTV section is for. And yeah, and then my own links. We were planning to bring back Raider Nick and another Kerbal, uh, not a tourist Kerbal, now Skirman. And so they're gonna come on the way back with this. Raider Nick objected strenuously to being on Mir. I don't know why exactly? Uh, possibly because he felt that it was not the most reliable station ever. But uh, yeah, so we decided to bring Raider Nick back so that we could put him to further uses. Raider Nick was actually not voluntarily a tourist in this series, not a paying customer, if you will. Uh, he was conscripted uh, for amusement, for my amusement, really. Anyway, so here we are approaching Mir. We had to do a whole bunch of corrections, obviously, to get to the right inclination. We kept the high orbit initially to do the inclination correction, but now it can approach. And as it did, uh, we had to clear off the docking port. Uh, there was a uh, claw and a tug there. 
blocking that docking port because we used that to place that module there. And after that deorbited, we brought the Lynx in. Sort of an awkward looking situation, but there we are. And... Connection. Alright. And then I had to transfer the food, water, and oxygen, the supplies we were bringing over. And then, of course, the two crew members go into the Lynx. And then we have to bring them home. So, off it goes again. It says food, water, and oxygen are running out, but that's because it had a huge capacity to begin with. It gives those warnings like at 10%, and of course we emptied more than 90% into the station. They have plenty left over, probably more than they needed. Anyway, there's the two BE-7s doing their work to transfer us back to Earth. We had to make various corrections because of the inclination that wasn't handling that the best way possible. And here is the approach to Earth. It had just enough fuel as it turns out. And off goes the service module. And the Lynx is on its own. This is, of course, before I redid the Lynx. This is the old version of the Lynx, which I still might use because it uh, works better with things that don't do the pass-through docking port system. I have to build modules for a station that actually uses that feature of the new links. Anyway, so here they come back down and everything is looking good. Sometimes we get dramatic music during re-entry, sometimes we don't. It's all up to VLC media player, completely random. And here we go, coming down on the parachutes. Music seems fairly appropriate. Actually, there are a few decent music cues this time around. And... Splashdown! Alright, after it stops bouncing, I recover, and they're back. So next up, it was finally time to bring Arthur E. King into Mercury SOI again, and try and capture him into orbit around Mercury. I forget if I lost a video where uh, his vessel was docked to this Attila Thrustered vessel. I don't know if that was included. That along the way, some files got corrupted, some video files, so. Anyway, so Arthur met up with that Attila Thruster vehicle, and this is a separate one that was bringing extra supplies as a backup. We have a lot of those. Now, for those who didn't catch what the Attila Thruster was, it's an augmented arc jet. Basically, it's got the ISP of an ion engine, but more thrust, so we don't have to wait around for a while. Uh, but that's only in-game. Real-time, actually, the ion engines work faster. There's another supply vessel. Uh, because we can time warp during while we use them. So the in real-time, the Attila thrusters aren't quite as time-saving. It's just the fact that we can do handle the nodes quicker and more efficiently instead of the way ion engines do over the period of many days. Though I sort of fixed that by upping the ion engine thrust, as mentioned in the previous video. So here we are capturing around Mercury, finally, finally, after much ordeal, we capture in this awkward orbit that cannot rendezvous with the other thing that we've captured, which is a return vehicle. And so some adjustments will need to be made eventually, but I check on the food, water, and oxygen situation and it's good. And here we have Miko. Miko is going out to Uranus, so... Yeah, lots of space, but I had to make sure that the food, water, and oxygen recycling was working on those modules. Those are USI modules. They were configured to recycle TAC life support resources, but I don't think they were originally meant for the way RO configures TAC life support. So I've been tweaking them to make sure that they recycle properly. Anyway, this is yet another supply vessel with ion engines. <laughs> that we are getting to Mercury. Ultimately, there's going to be quite a lot of supplies around Mercury, which is a good thing. Uh, if somebody else pays for a Mercury mission, I guess, we won't have to worry about that as much. I sincerely hope nobody else pays for a Mercury mission, but just in case, you know, we'll have the assets there and it sure, they, they sure need to be there. Let me put it that way. Okay, so this is doing more corrections to ensure a good approach to Mercury. Remember, we don't have that much time to do the capture burn with these ion engines, so we have to burn off a whole lot of the velocity ahead of time 
before actually getting to Mercury Periapsis, otherwise there won't be enough time to capture. And in this case, it's in good shape. It's basically captured already. And we just need to finish that off. So that one's okay. And it's even arriving with a healthy amount of Delta V, which is good. So it can potentially top off something else. And that's the orbit it came in. Well, okay, so maybe it'll have a little bit less Delta V when it finally rendezvous with something else, because it's going to have to bring that orbit into a better position. Anyway, this is the lander, because R3 King purchased a Mercury landing mission, so we had to send the lander. It is a tiny little Gemini light lander. The lightest thing I could possibly send for him to land in, and... It's a replacement. Originally, there was one on the mission already, but we had to ditch that in order to save Arthur. But here, the replacement is making orbit around Mercury, though a little bit delayed here. And as a result, we... Well, you can see we're already continuing on escape. We passed Periapsis by a long ways, but we capture like that, sort of, at the last minute. As a result, our periapsis is crashing into the surface though, so at apoapsis we have to lift that back up again, so... Yep, but we made it, so it's in orbit around Mercury for Arthur to eventually land on Mercury with, and we just have to rendezvous them together, which is gonna be the next bit of fun, getting all these little pieces together. There is also the issue of Arthur's girlfriend in the Mercury station, but we didn't deal with that in these streams, so that's gonna be later. But here's uh, one of the supply vessels arriving, and it too manages to capture. So we're all in good shape, we've got a lot of things in orbit around Mercury suddenly. That's the story of this particular video. Lots of things getting into orbit. Unfortunately, all sorts of weird orbits because of the haphazard way I did it. Previously, I had added an alarm to resupply the ISS, and it is that time. So, here we go with the ISS resupply mission on a Vulcan. A Vulcan rocket with four boosters. But, unfortunately, I overloaded it. Incidentally, the black box at the top uh, is because the song credit was not rotating properly. It wasn't changing based on the song, so it's the wrong credit up there right now. So, I just decided to block it out. Anyway, Vulcan rocket. Um, I hope they update stats for this rocket with more thrust on the core engines, maybe? Uh, that would be nice. I, I feel like I could do with more thrust on everything to do with this rocket, because once again, we're going to have an awkward situation with the payload trying to re-enter. I think I overload it, but... Yeah, anyway, here's separation. Maybe the core is lighter? The real core, I mean? could be. So there we have the two RL-10s and fairing separation. I just wanted to check that those were the fairings. Yes. Alright, so it's an HTV again because I like the look of the HTV with its shiny gold foil thing. And also it's got a pretty good ratio uh, for how much it could carry compared to its dry mass. But still we end up in this situation where the Centaur stage has to pitch up quite a lot, and even more actually, and it's still not really enough. We're back in the atmosphere, and we get pretty deep into the atmosphere actually. I was sort of surprised it was able to survive 80 kilometers, uh, but there it is. It's not even showing overheating or anything. I didn't make the HTV parts. I did make the Centaur stage parts. Uh, so, it's not all my fault. The docking port is stock, you know, I mean, that, that, so... I guess it can survive 80-ish kilometers? Well, anyway, we had to stage. We ran out of the propellant in the Centaur stage. Uh, I had the foresight to add an AJ-10-190 here to give extra thrust, otherwise the HGV's own engine would have doomed it. The engines, it has four 400 Newton thrusters, I think it is. So, yeah, that would not have been enough thrust, but as it turns out, the AJ-10 with a lot of extra Delta-V, mainly because it was meant to capture around the moon. I gave enough Delta-V to capture around the moon, I never took it off. So luckily, it had that and was able to get into orbit. And we actually managed to make it to the ISS, not with a whole lot of extra propellant, mind you. 
But maybe if we didn't have that AJ-10-190 stage on it, the launcher wouldn't have had so much problem because, of course, that's an additional mass there. Removing the old HTV here and adding the new one. The old HTV didn't have the AJ-10 because, again, that was mainly meant for the moon. I wasn't meaning to have that for the lower Earth orbit missions. But, as it turns out, it all ended fine after a bit of drama. And here we are coming into dock. Normally, of course, the HTV would be brought in by Canadarm. It wouldn't manually dock and it'd be on a common berthing mechanism, not on an A-pass in this case. But anyway, it is docked. And I was reorienting the ISS to its proper orientation. It had drifted somehow, trying to get it back right. But it got real choppy here. I, I don't remember if it was the recording that got choppy and it's just that or whether the game was actually choppy. Anyway, but that was just about the end of the stream, and I left it at that with this view of the ISS, well, this screenshot of the ISS. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.